It's the Shouldn't You Be In Bed Already show with your host, Graham Er Mattersman. Boy, have we got a show for you tonight, folks. We've got a musician I am too old and out of touch to know anything about. We've got a celebrity whose name I do not recall at the moment stopping by to solicit whatever product she slapped her name on since her career started to peter out. And so much more. But first, the top five things people and talking animals say and do to get you to abandon your rational thinking skills and agree with them. So here we are with tonight's top five logical fallacies. Number five. The slippery slope dilemma. This is when somebody says, well, if we let this thing slide, a whole bunch of other stuff, usually bad, is sure to follow. For example, a while back, it was commonly held that if you allowed one talking animal to drive, pretty soon we'd all be doing it. But that isn't true. More than 85% of us can't reach the pedals and see over the steering wheel at the same time. Furthermore, the only animals who have thumbs to steer with are primates, or those weird cats with thumbs. Number four, the bandwagon fallacy. Remember when you were a cub and your mom would say, just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to? Well, the bandwagon fallacy is just that. The speaker or writer suggests that everyone else agrees with them, therefore, so should you. My mom used to say, if all of the other cubs jumped off the highway overpass to grab some juicy roadkill, I suppose you'd be right behind them. But don't make fun of your mom's fallacy just yet. You do the same thing when you whimper, but mom, all of the other kids' parents are buying them the newest overpriced gadget. You should get one for me, too. Hm. Number three, the straw man. This one is a doozy. This is when somebody says that their opponent has said, done, or supported something that they haven't. It's called the straw man because the arguer has, in effect, built a fake version of their opponent, like a scarecrow, that they can beat up on since they can't actually beat that opponent with, you know, facts. Try and put words in my mouth, I dare ya. I'd bite your hand off because I'm a tiger. Number two, the hasty generalization. Basically, this is kind of like stereotyping, but it can be applied to all sorts of stuff, not just people or talking animals. For example, just because a few wolves dress up like grandmas in order to trick little girls into getting chomped on doesn't mean they're all big bad wolves. And tonight's number one logical fallacy, the red herring. The red herring fallacy is when an arguer avoids directly addressing something they can't or don't want to talk about by changing the subject. You see a lot of these in political debates. In fact, modern debates have included a new twist on this classic, whereby the befuddled arguer acts like they are answering the question they were asked, but then addresses something completely different. I once went to a presidential candidate's debate, and they threw so much red herring that I was mauled by stray cats on my way home. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is tonight's Shouldn't You Be In Bed Already show's top five logical fallacies. 